my gingerbread chat. It's Cole here, and this week's topic is about jobs and <clears throat> what places are gender accepting, what do you wear to an interview, where do you work, and are they accepting, and any tips that we may have for a genderqueer person looking for a job. This is a great topic. It's a viewer's choice topic this week, so I think that's amazing. I want to, um, you know, always keep the viewers in mind. Um, I do have to preface this by saying that it's really early in the morning for me, and I haven't had my coffee, but um, this is the only time today that I could do a video cause it, because it's finals and crazy things happening in my life. So you guys are going to have coffee with me, and hopefully I won't stumble over this too much um, in my sleepy state. Um, okay, so the first question is, what do you wear to an interview? Um, generally what I wear to an, I have varying things I wear to an interview depending on the type of job that, um, that I'm going to interview for. Um, typically, um, something that I have on now would be appropriate, um, layers, a nice sweater with an undershirt. Um, I know I never wear jeans to an interview. That's kind of a no, no. Um, I always wear, uh, slacks or, um, with my last job, I wore a uh, really nice cut suit. Um, I didn't have a tie on, um, but it was a, a really nice pants um, suit with a jacket. And it was nice. It was good. I got the job. So um, I think the most important thing to keep in mind when um, dressing for an interview um, isn't necessarily to be um, gender neutral as much as being professional. Um, I think that um, with the kind of fashion right now, um, being overly um, feminine or masculine is really unimportant. I don't think that makes you look less professional. So um, I think that as long as you um, dress appropriately for the interview, dress professionally, I really don't think you can go wrong with slacks um, and layered, um, a layered top or maybe even a um, jacket, suit jacket or something. All right, the next question is, what places are genderqueer accepting? Um, okay, well, a lot of employers that I've noticed when I go to interviews, at least here where I'm from, don't really recognize a person as being genderqueer necessarily. That doesn't come into their mind right off the bat, regardless of kind of how you dress. Um, they're usually going to see you as your um, uh, assigned gender. Uh, typically. Uh, and I think that maybe this isn't a bad thing always. Um, as much as I want to be recognized as genderqueer, when I'm looking for a job, um, what I really want is for someone to want me as a person and not necessarily my gender identity. So I think it's important to be yourself in an interview um, and that will sell you for the job, not necessarily your gender identity. Um, now in Texas, definitely not every place is accepting of a genderqueer person. Um, there's a lot of clothing stores here that won't, there's no way that they would accept a genderqueer person. Like I can think of like American Eagle and Abercrombie and Fitch where they only, you know, hire these gorgeous, which I'm not saying I'm complaining about going to these stores and seeing beautiful people. There's nothing wrong with that. And you know, if that helps them sell clothes then fine. Um, but I really don't see any any gender variance there. It's usually extreme ends of the spectrum for these clothing stores. Um, we have a lot of Western apparel stores. Never, definitely never seen a gender person working in a Western apparel store selling cowboy boots. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen. Um, and some restaurants here are a little more, a little less about gender variance, such as, um, I actually did get a job at a, at a restaurant that ended up being kind of a bad place to work for me. Uh, it was a place called Trail Dust, which is a like a country steakhouse thing. Anyway, it's funny because I don't eat meat, but anyway, it's a country steakhouse, and um, I was always getting all these comments about my gender presentation. Now, at the time, I my hair was in a faux hawk. I wasn't wearing it in a faux hawk at work, but it was really short on the sides. It was dyed black. I kind of looked more like rock or punk or something, I guess. Um. So I would just comb it over at work. It kind of looked nerdy, I guess. I thought it looked sort of like nerdy cute or whatever, but um, apparently not everyone thought that. So I don't know if it was just that I looked, you know, extra masculine or whatever, or looked, 
I think people thought I was just, you know, a, a lesbian is what I'm assuming. Um, and sometimes people would uh, make comments about it. My employer would say it wasn't professional, even though it was literally just a combed over haircut. There wasn't, I wasn't wearing it in the faux hawk. I wasn't being extreme um, or anything like that. Um, my fellow employees would say things about it. A lot of them were um, a little more traditionally Texan. Um, there's usually, for some reason, there's a lot of Texans who are extremely proud to be Texans. And that's cool um, to have pride. But if you don't fit into like their stereotype of what a Texan should be, they kind of don't really want to associate with you. So that kind of, oh, I kind of got that a lot. And um, one of the worst things that happened was one, one group of, of, of people that came in to eat there um, actually asked to change servers because they didn't feel comfortable with me. So that was pretty lame. <laughs> and I didn't work there very long, obviously. Um, waiting tables wasn't my favorite, but you do what you have to do to make money. Um, so, but then, you know, even though there's some places that don't accept gender queer people, there are more places that do, for sure. I mean, any coffee shop you go to around here, you can find some gender variants, record stores, um, things that are even a lot more fun than waiting tables. <laughs> any bar, really, or most bars around here in this college town anyway. And here in Denton, it, it's really not, it's not bad for a gender queer person. Um, Job-wise, you can definitely get a job here. Um, I know in other areas, you know, it may be more difficult. Okay. Wow. Okay. So the next question is, where do you work and are they accepting? Well, I've had the same job for five years. I work at an animal hospital. Um, it's a small, small animal hospital clinic. We work with uh, uh, dogs, cats, um, and we also work with uh, any type of small mammal, uh, like ferrets or rats or things like that. We even work with birds and also with, with some reptiles. So I've worked there for five years. It's a long time. It's the longest I've ever had a job. Um, and I have an interesting relationship with the people that I work with. I mean, um, you know, my boss and I have been through kind of a lot. Um, he's very different from me, you know, very cisgendered, very binary thinking, um, very straight. Um, and I've talked to him about a lot of things. We've had a lot of deep conversations. He's just, he, he can only really see a certain, to a certain point. And then he just can't quite grasp onto other concepts. So, you know, when I first came to work there, he was a little weird that I had a girlfriend. Um, but then, you know, as our relationship's grown, he's like, kind of like my uncle was sort of how I would put it now. Um, you know, he invites me to like his Christmas parties and to his house and all this stuff. So, I mean, we're, you know, we're close in a way. As far as coming out to him as genderqueer, I really have thought about that a lot. You know, should I do that? Is that going to be better? And I just, I really like our relationship the way it is. I like, you know, our level of professionalism. And I don't necessarily know that he needs to know that about me. Um, because, you know, we work so closely together. I, I do his, his help him with surgery. I, you know, um, take care of the animals. He trusts me. And, um, you know, he is so accepting of my relationship, you know, uh, and he's so accepting of, he's so supportive of me. Uh, I just, I don't really feel comfortable, um, you know, going there with him because I just don't think that it's necessary. Um, I, I would love him to be educated on it, on gender queer issues, but I don't necessarily know the workplace and he, he being my boss would be a really great way to, to expose him to education in that way. So I appreciate the fact that he's accepting of me in general and it's great to be in a place where I feel pretty comfortable, you know, um, our, our uniforms are, um, gender neutral, really. They're white shirts and khakis. So I don't ever feel like I have to be anything but genderqueer. I just haven't necessarily put a label to it with him since he is my boss and I just kind of want to keep it you know, a little more professional. Um, now my coworkers all know I'm genderqueer. I always come out to people that I have to work with, you know, that are on the same level as I, excuse me, as I am. And, um, my coworkers, I spent time talking with each of them at length about this. And, you know, it's so great to be in an accepting environment where, 
you know, you tell someone, Hey, you know, this is how I feel about gender. You know, I'd appreciate it if you did it for me as a lesbian. Cause that's usually why it comes up is, you know, they're like, Oh, I have lesbian friends or whatever. And I'm like, you know, I'm really not a lesbian. Like, <laughs> I have a girlfriend, but this is kind of how it is. And no, it's not really about sexuality. It's more about gender for me. And one of the coworkers that I work with is really more like family. And she has been my biggest supporter and totally, totally loves to for chat channel. And, um, just has really just been an inspiration to me because she's, um, so open and so sweet. And kind so it's really great I really love where I'm working now and um, like again I've, I've been there for a while um, each new we kind of have some turnover a lot of the time like myself and the other co-worker I was just talking about we've both been there about the same amount of time but um, we're constantly getting a third employee kind of going in and out and I don't know just for whatever reason they leave or it doesn't work out and so I always have to continually come out you know to people at work continually come out to new people and that's good for me, but it's also a little bit annoying because sometimes I feel like, oh, I don't want to have this conversation, but I always feel so much better when I do just because that way they can read me in the way that I would like to be read. They can understand my gender and I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about living up to anything or um, them viewing me in a way that, is, that makes me uncomfortable, etc. So that's about my work. Um, I guess the last question is um, any tips for getting a job? I think my tip would just be be yourself in your interview. Um, as long as you look professional and you're confident in who you are, um, the rest really should come easily. I personally have, um, I've gotten almost every single job that I've ever interviewed for. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I get excited about the new position. You know, I um, get into it. I ask questions. Um, about the job and I really try to answer each interview question really honestly and not give them a bullshit answer. I think that's the worst you can do is give them what they want to hear. Don't do that. Give them an honest answer. Give them something they haven't heard. You know, that'll make them interested in you. That'll make them think that, you know, you're somebody that thinks outside of the box, you know? So, well, I guess that's all I have for you guys today, but, um, I will see you guys next week. Have a great one.